Production funding for Lakeland Currents is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. For information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is sponsored by Niswa Tax Service. Tax preparation for businesses and individuals. Online at NiswaTax.com. your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota, produced by Lakeland Public Television with host Ray Gildow. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Lakeland Currents, where tonight we're talking about a topic very near and dear to my heart called Let's Go Fishing. <clears throat> this is not a show about how to catch fish, although these people probably could give you some pretty good hints on how to do that. But it's about a program that's statewide that's impacting people in care centers and nursing homes who get an opportunity to go fishing where they just haven't had that for maybe a long time or maybe even never. It, everybody's case is different, but it's a, it's a great cause and I'm happy to have my guest here to talk about that tonight. To my immediate right is Phil Nelson. Myers. Phil Myers, I'm sorry, <laughs> Phil. Phil Myers, who is with the Brainerd chapter and you, Phil, you're also the president of the Brainerd Club. That's right? correct, yes. And Carol Worley is to his right and to her right, is Anita Williams, and Anita is from the Grand Rapids chapter. Yep. Welcome to you all. You're all color cor coordinated, so you look pretty good. <laughs> Logo pretty, wear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You look pretty official. Uh, just tell me a little bit about how long you folks have been working with this program before we get into what the program is. Phil, how long have you been with Let's Go Fishing? Well, I'm in my seventh year. I started as a volunteer seven years ago. I was volunteering for three years, got on the board you know, four years ago and served been on the board since then and been chapter president for the last two years. And how about you, Carol? Mm, for me, about six years ago, I got to be a volunteer. Probably two to three months into my volunteering, they asked me to be on the board. So I've been on the board ever since. And, and I came on board with Let's Go Fishing about uh, four years ago, and I was just basically invited to a board meeting first off, and they said, we know you love fishing and doing this kind of stuff. Hey, do you want to join in and so I've so you got hooked? been on the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hook, that's. Well, who could give us a kind of an overall perspective about what Let's Go Fishing is all about? Well, Phil, you yeah, want to do that? Sure, I, sir. <clears throat> I think it's very simple. Uh, we put smiles on people's faces <laughs> and fishing is a mechanism we do that. Mm -hmm. And we're primarily serving seniors who no longer have the means or ability to go out and do this activity on their own anymore. So or they like to go out and fish, and sometimes they just like to go out in the boat and go for a ride on the lake. Uh, many of them ever have given up hope of ever seeing the water again in their lives. And when they get on, they tell my friends, it's, it's like seeing a six-year-old at Christmas sometimes. I mean, the absolute joy you see in their faces. And when we're done, I mean, if you don't like getting hugs, you wouldn't like this job. You know, we get off the boat and get them, you know, to their transportation. There are always two or three hugs. You know, people run up and give you a great big squeeze and say, thank you. I mean, you've made our day. And uh, you walk away from that just feeling phenomenal. And how many trips does a typical chapter take in the summer? In Brainerd, we schedule <clears throat> nine trips a week. Uh, wow. You know, all summer long. Wow. You know, depending upon weather conditions, we'll take out 900 to 1,100, maybe 1,200 guests over the course of a summer. You know, some of those may be repeats, but sure. uh, it's busy. Uh, we're blessed to have over 100 volunteers that make this chapter work. Uh, it's an all-volunteer organization. Um, so we have a tremendous you know, board uh, of volunteers and a tremendous base of volunteers that makes it all work. And through all the years, at least the Brainerd chapter, we have never had to cancel a trip because we didn't have a volunteer to really? take the trip out. Wow. So Now, you all use pontoon, pontoons, rather. <clears throat> Uh, do you have one pontoon in Brainerd? Or do we have more than one? We have one pontoon in Brainerd. So when you say you're going out that many trips, that pontoon's really being used yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's getting used it? twice. Monday to Thursday, we have morning and afternoon trips, and a Friday morning. So are they like four-hour trips? They're two and a half hour trips. Two and a half, half hours. And this year we introduced a couple <clears throat> evening trips, some four to six-hour trips too. So there have been a couple times we've run three trips a day. Wow. So the demand's coming up. You know. So you have someone who captains the pontoon. Yeah, we always and have a crew of two. We have a captain and a first mate. And we'll those there. people go through a training program? Yes, absolutely. There's and, a training. And, and what are you focused the training on besides rules of the water? 
I, I mean, you have um, folks who have some disabilities, disadvantages. I would guess you have to have people understand how to deal with that too, don't you? Well, a little bit. <clears throat> Most of the care facilities provide volunteers that come out or staff members that deal with you know any issues that may be along those lines. Our primary training is operating the boat in safety. I mean, it's all about being safe on the water. I mean, getting life jackets on our guests before they get off the, the shoreline and onto the boat, making sure they're seated and comfortable, and just making sure everybody has a good time and, and staying safe. Uh, if there's issues with individuals, sure, I mean, we, some of us just have learned to deal with different things, because sometimes you have people that maybe have a little dementia, mm -hmm. or cases like that, and, uh, and sometimes, you know, things can occur, and, you know, and you know, we deal with it, but there's always staff members who are more trained in that than we are. I mean, our job is to get them out and, you know, and yeah, And you got to learn how to figure out, okay, how many wheelchairs can you get on that pontoon at one time? Sure. And mm -hmm. make that, you know, how does that work and removing seats and... So you take the seats off the pontoon when you have the, yeah, the wheelchair. Yeah, if, there's that, yeah, if you need board. that spot for a wheelchair, <clears throat> yeah. And then when you have, um, how many can you take on your average pontoons that are used in Let's Fish, Go Fishing? We often take 10. Ten people. Ten guests, um, and if you have a wheelchair, that might take off an extra seat. So perhaps just nine. But because our pontoon is how long? Twenty. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. It's it's plenty long for your mo for our mobility because our main job, probably like yours too, yeah. is putting on worms and yeah. casting oh. it out. They do all the reeling yeah. in and they do the fun part <laughs> for sure. So so are the, we, is there a minimum requirement? Do you have to belong to a care facility or a nursing home? What if it's a person that lives alone? Can they be involved with this? Yes, actually we service our senior center, um, also home instead, which are people that just stay at home and then sometimes a caregiver comes in once in a while. Um, we have one person who twice I took out in the last month who was blind and his wife came too. And so she drives them. They don't have to have a you know bus, a handicapped bus, or any kind of mm -hmm. a bus that's suitable for disabilities to bring them there. And, and, uh, and mm -hmm. Phil, we talked a little bit about this off air, but how many lakes do you actually fish in, in the, the Brainerd area? In the Brainerd area, <clears throat> we're fishing four. We're fishing Gull Lake, Rice Lake, uh, Bay Lake, and Pelican Lake. And how about from your area? And, and, and we mostly fish Pokagama, but we do bring it to Trout Lake when we do a veterans program and. Um, then there's another lake uh, that, you know, there's maybe, but the main lake that we use is Pokagama Lake. We uh, keep the pontoon right there on the lake. Uh, uh, the other thing I was going to share with you is the mission statement of Let's Go Fishing, and it's bringing nature's healing and well-being to seniors, veterans, and the disabled. So that kind of sums up what, you know, our mission is as an organization as a whole. So when you say veterans, I would guess that if there's someone who's handicapped, it wouldn't necessarily have to meet a, an age requirement. Would that be fair? Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is this all catch and release? No, they, or can people yeah. keep them if they want They to? can keep them if they want. The one service we don't provide is cleaning fish. <laughs> so if they wish to bring, you know, keep some home and they can keep a legal limit of fish, take it home and clean them up and cook them up themselves, that's just fine. For many of these folks, uh, and I know a little bit about the organization, it's the first time they've gotten to do this in a long time, isn't it? For many oh, of these people, absolutely, mm -hmm. and, to, and to even catch a perch, yeah, that's five inches long. That's it's what they fun. love. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's fun because it's action, and that that's pretty exciting to see. And the sad part is that sometimes it's the last trip that some of them ever get to make. But it, one of the things on board that I do yeah. often is take photos of the people with the fish, and then if they are able to, or if the caregivers are able to mm -hmm. tell me what is your son's telephone number or, or you know where I can text it and oftentimes right wow. on board the boat I send off mm -hmm. the picture to great great granddaughter or great grandson or, or something and they text back <clears throat> right away of course <laughs> and <clears throat> um, they're really oh my gosh grandpa you are out fishing that is the coolest thing so it's pretty fun to have the immediate satisfaction for them to even let someone else know mm -hmm. Here's what I'm doing, something I've loved to do. Anita, in your area, how many volunteers do you usually deal with, roughly? Yeah, for volunteers, we have about 50. We're always looking for more. 50. So if anyone wants to be, yeah. And we took out uh, nearly 1,200 uh, participants wow. this year, um, fishing and on cruises. 1,000 volunteer hours. So we're working wow. hard to service the needs of our area. 
So when you guys take these folks out fishing, um, do the nursing homes or the care centers or wherever, do they make all the arrangements with you beforehand? How, do, how does that, how do you line this up? Yeah, they, <clears throat> they schedule the trips. I mean, it's different chapters do this differently. We have a big schedule and event in the beginning of the year where all the care facilities come together and it's kind of like a lottery. You know, they draw a number, one to the 30 or so facilities, and then number one, you get to pick a spot and then write down the 30, then go backwards again, and they can fill in oh. spots. So before we even put our boat in the water, we have 90% of our trips booked really? for our care facilities. So they all know when they are, then they have their sign-up sheets to get their people organized. We always contact them a couple days before the trip just to remind them, go over any last-minute details, find out how many are coming, any special needs, wheelchairs or otherwise, so we know what to, and we're ready for that. And they show up on the dock with the bus and we get them on board and so, have fun. So how many um, institutions do you actually work with in the Brainerd Lakes area? I think it's around 30, isn't it, Carol? Mm -hmm. wow. yeah, give or, mm -hmm. give or take Are there some that don't get involved with Let's Go Fishing or are most of them involved? I think most of them are. Yeah. If we find one that isn't, we will contact them and you know, do a little and, sales yeah, right, pitch. and you know, it's a, it's a free program. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, it, there, there's no, no charge. To there's the... no charge for them to come and do it. So uh, you know, mm -hmm. all our money's raised, you know, uh, on the side, you know, for that supports this program. And so by making it free for the seniors, I think we get more to participate. So how many chapters of Let's Go Fishing are there? Do you have any idea statewide? There's 24 right now in Minnesota and one in Wisconsin. It's in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. And this was started by Joe Holm, right? Correct. And what year did you know what year he started this? I don't know the exact year. I'm thinking it's about 12 years ago. Okay. Roughly. Uh, and it began. you operate a lot, and you mentioned this a little bit, but you have sponsorships. You get local mm -hmm. businesses to help sponsor. And what does the sponsorship pay for? Well, the sponsorship, you'll see decals on the side of the boats. If you just Google Let's Go Fishing, you can go to the Wet Main website and see pictures of a lot of the boats, and you'll see the decals around the side. And all those people pay a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars or some fee every year uh, to support that. So the local chapter, I mean, that brings us in, you know, maybe twelve thousand dollars a year, which helps covers our expenses, fuel, insurance, you know, equipment maintenance, new things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that we have to you know, do to keep the boats up to date and safe. And for the Itasca chapter, we do a couple of fundraisers. Mm -hmm. We have a fishing tournament, and so we get sponsors for that, and then we use their names in the advertising and on the back of the T-shirt, and um, we you know, do a lot of different stuff that way. And then we also have a fish fry every spring to get everybody really excited about starting out the fishing season. And so we get sponsors for that, and we serve... Uh, 500, 600 people fish that wow. come and so does that, buy a fish dinner. It's fun. We're does, all so excited to get together, put on our yellow, bright yellow shirts and volunteer and help. And, and does that cover a big portion then of your operation for the year? It's a pretty good fundraiser for us. <clears throat> that and the fishing tournament, those are our two bigger. And then we do apply for some different grants and, and there's different things um, to do to help raise the money. But it seems like... Uh, you know, there's always someone want to help out and be part of the organization when they hear how many people you service, you know, from veterans to the elderly to disabled. Yeah. So you've got a chapter in Bemidji, I believe. Is there a chapter in Bemidji? Maybe not. There was, there, there, I think. I know Grand Rapids. Yes. Do you have the chapter? Yeah, we are Itasca. We are a Itasca chapter. And I think St. Cloud. Does St. Cloud have a chapter? You know, I'd have to look exactly and see where those are all over the, yeah, yeah. I was Spicer just curious. And Wilmer and Spicer and Wilmer, yeah, yeah. Spicer area. Wilmer, Alexandria. New London, yeah. Alexandria. Yeah. Several metro chapters. And so do you folks get together on a yearly basis at all, your boards, and do you talk about the challenges of raising money? And Yeah, and we have a yearly, well, and it's some really interesting training. You know, they they try to give us a lot of support and help us to be able to lead our, our individual chapters and give us some ideas, we can have round table discussions and get to meet uh, great volunteers like this at, at those meetings too. I really enjoy going. Yeah, they hold like those that. every year in the spring. Okay, yeah, so. and then if it's rainy or windy, you just maybe have to reschedule if you get those. I'm sure this year we've had a lot of that yeah, this, yeah, we, this fall yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we don't go out if it's the stormy mm -hmm. or even the summer if it gets too hot. Cause that can be you know just as dangerous as rain. You know, right. we have a bunch of seniors on right. the boat. so. It's a call we make on usually on, on the day, uh, and that's up to the captain's prerogative to decide if he wants to go or not and contact the facility, and they will discuss the options and make a go or no-go decision. Okay. 
And I know that funding has been an issue off and on, as it is with most volunteer organizations. Uh, it's just impressive what, about how many people do volunteer for Let's Go Fishing. When you talk about yeah. the number of volunteers you have in Grand Rapids and Brainerd, mm -hmm. that's a phenomenal number of people. Yeah, isn't that incredible? So yeah. how many captains do you have trained in these two communities that just operate the boats, the, the pontoons? Well, we must half our volunteers probably. are probably captains. Oh, yeah. half are? Yep. Yeah. Really? Yep. So that, I know they go through a training program yep. on water yep. safety yep. and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. That's pretty that impressive. That certain protocol. Yeah. And with the liabilities, you know, they, the captains mm -hmm. and co-captains need to know just exactly what the, what the pro what is the let's go fishing way of doing things, you know, for example, get those life jackets mm -hmm. on the participants before you get them on the boat. And, and how, how long does your season go? We starts in May, ours yeah. starts in May and goes until, I mean, it's, I think, officially considered done and finished now. Yeah. So sort of yeah. into September? But, yeah. Although, one great thing we have in the Atasca chapter is um, accessibility to a couple of ice houses. So we can take out oh, the really? people ice fishing even, yeah. <laughs> Did, does Brainerd do that too? We've talked about that, but we have not taken that to the next level yet. So... Yeah, yeah just, one of our volunteers, a, he has a, a couple of them have ice houses, and they okay. say, hey, I love to go fishing. I would be more than happy to. Wow. Now, so you fish mostly panfish when you go out, so you fish along the weed lines, I would guess, yes. for the yes. most yeah. part. Yep. And uh, so you get crappies, and do you get well, some sun crappies fish and sunfish? Sunfish, sun fish and when we get into big rock bass, that's when it gets to be fun, because yeah, then you get right. bigger fish on. And, and, and they can and fight. They, oh, yeah, they, they have a ball. They get yeah. you into a pound or two rock bass, and yeah. they get a good fight on their hands when they have a lot of fun doing that. So do you, when you, obviously you need rods and reels and you need tackle, mm -hmm. is that all part of your fundraising efforts then? And does that stay with the pontoon? Yes. When you get yes. that kind of equipment there? Yes. Yeah. Life jackets, Life jackets. And, and that sort mm -hmm. of thing? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, and has there, ever, has there been any efforts to get funding from the state at this level for this operation? Or is it mostly through volunteer fundraising? You know, most of the chapters are fundraising for themselves. The state is, has embarked on a capital campaign to try to raise some more significant money at the state level to try to expand the program you know, into more areas than it currently exists. And so, and you know, and we pay a little bit of a fee to the state office every year that covers our insurance and administrative overhead costs. So that's coming out of the money. We collect you know, for our chapter, we pay some to them and the rest is going into say, taking care of our boat and, and any other equipment that we need. So your overhead's really minimal when you don't have any labor costs. Well, you do wear out, I mean, you wear, yeah. out, wear out the pontoon. Motors. It's amazing yeah. how Have you worn out a pontoon? Many, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, we had to get yeah. a new pontoon. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we're on our same pontoon, but we just did procure a new motor this fall. It'll be on the boat next spring. Wow, I so. would be, I, you must be hard on pontoons if well, you're wearing Well, I mean, you're taking a lot of runs, you I'm know? I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've replaced our carpet with a hard floor. Oh, sure. That's much easier to clean. We've had reupholstery done because yeah. it was falling apart. And we want it to be comfortable sure. and the people want to, you know, have, be, have, have a, comfort yeah, inside. Yeah, have it here. set up on a nice, yeah. nice basis. Yeah. So if someone wants to get involved as a volunteer with Let's Go Fishing from your communities, how do they do that? Probably the easiest way is Google Let's Go Fishing and that main chapter and that main page you can go to, there's a link to all the different chapters and then there's phone numbers for every chapter that you can call and find out more and information. And that would be the same? Call, call any of the presidents yep. or anyone on the board or you can yep. even ask any of the other people that are volunteers, hey, how can I do this? And the one thing, like how I got involved, is someone that was on the board said, hey, you love to fish, why don't you come join me at a meeting and see if you're interested? And I thought, oh. So I think that's important that us as volunteers try to put that invitation out there to others to see, hey, maybe this is a good fit for you guys. And So some of your, your volunteers must be younger like you are, or you have jobs <laughs> and you're doing things, as Phil, you said, you're self-employed. Yep. So oh. you kind of work out a schedule with your own business? Sure, I can. Do you, I, do I you can. act as a captain from yes. time to time? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, did, haven't got out as much the last two years since I took over as president because I've been busy with a lot of that stuff. But uh, fortunately, my schedule allows me to take a morning off here or there. But for younger people working a regular full-time job, it can be hard because most of our stuff is during sure. the week. So sure. we have a lot of older volunteers, and as one of our 
former board, board member said we're really old people taking older people fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing so, wrong with that, though. No. <laughs> Nothing so, wrong with that. No. So. One, one thing we've done this year, we partnered with a census, which is a large company in this city. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, something that they do for their employees, which I think is good. They want them to volunteer. And so they partnered with us. So their volunteers actually come and drive our boats during work time. They get released from work during the work day and it's not called vacation, it's called volunteer. That's so, nice. Yeah, very yeah, nice. You see more and more companies enriches, doing a community company. service as yes. part of their employment, yep. don't and you? And these are younger people. These are, you know, yeah. millennials. So yeah. we are right. talking millennials working with an elderly population, really which is cool. a really good match. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be nice to see something like this for kids. Because one of the things mm -hmm. that, and I've been in the fishing industry a long time, we see so many kids who are not interested in the outdoors as much mostly because they don't have an opportunity. They don't own a mm -hmm. boat, yeah. and they don't know somebody they can go walk down along their shore to go fishing. And it's a similar thing with your mm -hmm. clients. When they were sitting in nursing homes before, they didn't have these opportunities. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. You know, and we, we do take some youth groups out from time yeah. to time. I've had a group of you know, uh, you know, somewhat challenged you know, youth out in the boat and had a really good time with them. You know, um, so I mean, we're open for that. I mean, yeah. our focus has always been seniors, but I mean, so the you, boats here will will accommodate anybody. If you have a group and you think it would be good for them, by all means, contact us, and we'll do what we can to get you on the water. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We volunteer cool. with Camp Confidence, also. Oh, you uh, do? Yeah, wounded veterans. We take mm -hmm. out actually entire families. If um, we know there's a veteran that would like to go out fishing, we will find out who their family are. We've, I've had five generations on the boat. Really? Yeah, all at one time. Wow. It was just wonderful. Oh, so wow. we'll take yeah. out entire groups of families. So when you, I've, I've done some work with wounded veterans too, and how, how do you make the connection there? That connection <coughs> is usually made through the Legion. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones that do the contacting, then they contact us, yeah. and we work it out. Yeah. Wow, I bet they really appreciate that too, don't they? Well, everybody does. Yeah. It's yeah. quite a, it moves us too. It's very emotional, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, it really it does. is. I don't think if people, and we've got some video we're going to show when we're doing this interview, and I hope people can see the smiles on folks' faces. I haven't seen your video yet, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that will, will come through, won't it? Yeah, yes. when we <clears> take <throat> off, when the boat starts leaving the dock and everybody's saying goodbye, yeah. You'll see the smiles, yeah. yes. Because you think of some, some of these folks have been in uh, some of these uh, facilities for a long time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. most of the time, if their families can't come and take them out, they're pretty confined, mm -hmm. aren't they? Mm -hmm. And you know what's one thing that really surprised me is taking some of these from the nursing home out and they actually have kind of lost the ability to communicate. They can't communicate like you and I can, mm -hmm. but they catch a fish and you see that excitement and you know that they are very aware that they did something really good. They're the big cheese for that moment. Yeah. And that empowerment and that freedom and that um, sense of self-confidence that you can see. You can't sit and have a conversation maybe with some of them like we are able to, but it's amazing how they, you get such positive feedback from them and you can tell that they just are thoroughly enjoying mm -hmm. So fishing or being out for a boat ride or so the, do the facilities make the decision about whether the person's capable of doing this or not i, I would guess they yeah, have to because you, so. you're not in a position yeah, to know but that if they can get in there like along that same line i had a, an alzheimer's patient out an old gentleman i've known for years he had no idea who i was anymore but as soon as i put that rod and reel in his hand that was all there really and he was catching fish like crazy really and then when i met you know, his couple of his kids later in the year, and we talked about, told him what a great time his dad had out there. I mean, they were so thankful because they had seen dad, and dad talked about fishing, but they don't know if he's talking about fishing when he was a kid or something just happened now. So, I mean, what we did was good for, for dad, and that made the kids feel real good because they knew, I mean, he was out still Absolutely. having a good time. Wow, that's really cool. Very cool. Well, and you know, I've taken a 93-year-old woman out fishing too, and part of me, sometimes I say, I hope someone's taking me fishing when I'm 93. That's, uh, That's incredible. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It really is. So if um, someone wanted to make a contribution to the organizations in Grand Rapids, how do they do that? Yeah, they would contact um, any one of us board members or Bev Taylor's our president. Contact her. You could also go through the website. 
Um, let's go fishing, I task a chapter, uh, make the contact there. Um, that's what I would say. Or you can go contact the, the whole organization, corporate office, and then earmark money for a certain chapter too, if you want to, or you can give just uh, to the organization as a whole. So there's, and it's how, easy to give. Sure, and how about the Brainerd organization? Where do they go if they wanted to make a, make a contribution of some sort? Really, same thing, look on the website. Uh, I guess you can call our number, it's 218-454-FISH. Yep. That's the only number, that, that's yeah. our, our chapter phone line, so 218-454-FISH. You might get a recording right now, but somebody will be happy to get back to you with and information And that would be the that. similar, same information as if someone wanted to be a sponsor. Sure. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what, what does a sponsor get out of it? I mean, you said you put a sticker on the, on the pontoon. Yeah, Do they have any other benefits? The stickers on the pontoon, there's also a portion on the website under each chapter that lists all the sponsors uh, that are there. Um, you know, we try to promote those sponsors when we have some of our, our training facilities, our end of season you know, volunteer appreciation banquet, we try to encourage people to, you know, do business with those who sponsor us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we do that too mm -hmm. at our Christmas party, our annual Christmas party. We put together a really beautiful Christmas party for all the volunteers and, and we do give plaques and awards to those that have sponsored and, and been donors and, you know, so they can hang that at their, in their business mm -hmm. wall that, hey, we are a proud sponsor mm -hmm. of Let's Go Fishing, I task a chapter. And, and what have you got in store? What's coming down the pike? Anything new next year? I put you all on the spot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned a partnership with children, and that may be an interesting thing to look into mm -hmm. to have future partnerships with kinship, for example. Yes, I, I think that's a great yes. idea. There's so many young kids that would get excited. I mean, Very much a so. lot of us old timers had grandpas and grandmas yeah. that, you know, that took us fishing, and uh, that's missing for a lot of families mm -hmm. and a lot of kids now. So that would be. Something really wonderful. And to for do. several years in a row, we've taken um, fifth graders from Forest Lake Elementary in oh. Grand Rapids, and you know they can sign up whoever wants, and we will rent and bring a couple more pontoons so we can get everybody in in a two-day period mm -hmm. of time, and let them have a little fishing trip. So it's it can be the first introduction to some of those youth that may not otherwise have a chance to be on the boat or go fishing mm -hmm. or enjoy that. So well, we're out of time. Uh, thank you all for coming, and it's a, a wonderful organization, and I know you guys are doing great work. Thank you for the for the volunteer efforts that you put in. It's just a, a marvelous program. Thank you. For thank you for being Thanks on for the show. Us. Yes, thank you for thank having you. us. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time.